So you're shopping for a 25 inch steel chainsaw. With any chainsaw, you have a lot of barn chain options to choose from that will fit on any particular saw. So you need a big saw to run a 25 inch bar and this is where the horsepower finally gets big enough. In front of me are the two most popular options. The MS391, this is considered a farm and ranch saw, but it's really a homeowner saw. It's the biggest homeowner saw that steel makes. And then over here is the MS362. This is a commercial saw, and this is on the smaller end of the commercial saw spectrum. But they have similar size engines, similar horsepower, similar weights, with a much heavier build construction than the 391. If you walked into a dealer, you'd be looking at a price point of roughly $739 on the MS391 versus a price tag of $949 on the 362. So roughly a delta of $210 going from this saw to this saw. So what does $210 get you? We're going to do a walk around of the exterior. We're going to open up the guts and then we're going to go run these saws and we're going to show you why $210 more for a 362. So you may be thinking 391, that's a bigger number. That's a bigger saw than a 362. That's not the case. It's a very long story, the modeling story. I love telling it, but we don't have enough time for it here. So with these two saws, the 391 being a homeowner saw and the 362 being a commercial saw, you have a $210 price jump. And what do you get for that jump? The 391 is a 64.1 cc saw that puts out 4.4 horsepower and it weighs 13.67 pounds. That's just the motor unit without the barn chain because there's a lot of barn chain options and that's variable. The 362 is a 59cc saw that puts out 4.6 horsepower and it weighs 12.3 pounds. So it's a pound and a half lighter and that pound and a half makes a big difference. I have a scale. We're going to see how much it weighs with a barn chain. So first, the MS391. With a 20 inch barn chain, I know we're talking about 25s, just happen to have a 20 on here with 16.91 and the more expensive all metal commercial saw but you'd think all metal it's going to be heavier but it's not 15.59 noticeably lighter when you hold the two in your hands okay now we're going to do a little walk around the exterior of these saws we're going to take the hoods off we're going to take the sprocket covers off we're going to look at some of the internal components and how they differ and then we're going to take the saws outside and we're going to do an RPM test to see what kind of top end RPM these peak out at. First off, notice this black line versus no line here. This is called the felling line and this is used for felling a tree and cutting a wedge and then completing the cut and directionalizing the fall of the tree. In steel's eyes, this is a firewood saw. This is just a ground saw for cutting up firewood. Whereas this saw is professional arborist doing fanciful cutting and felling techniques. So they need the line. This saw does not. Let's look at the front side. And you can see here that this saw is a poly body. So it's a plastic body. It's still a metal engine, but it's mounted to a plastic body. Whereas this one is a magnesium aluminum alloy body. It's very strong, but it's metal and it's, it's lightweight and it dissipates heat really well. You also see the difference in the muffler. This is a passivated stainless steel muffler, much more durable. On your sprocket covers, this is a plastic sprocket cover with bar nuts that come off, all the way off. This is a metal sprocket cover with retained bar nuts. So once I take this off later, you'll see that these are made onto this cover and they're not gonna get lost in the woods. This one has the elasto start feature. This is a spring-loaded rope. In the case of a snapback, it's gonna save the tendons in your, in your fingers, whereas this one is a standard rope. Assuming you're not starting this very often, you don't need that luxury. Both saws have a decompression valve and this is because this engine is so big that without it, it'd be a beast to try to start this motor. And then both of the saws also have oil control. So there is a place on the bottom where you can dial your oil up and down, even in the homeowner range. 
Let's take the engine covers off, we'll face them this way, and show you what we got going on under the hood. So in the case of the 391, you have Torx head bolts, and in the case of the 362, you have a really fancy little fastener that just spins 90 degrees and pops loose. I'll show you that. Definitely quicker getting in and out of this cover than in this cover. Under here, you can see that they feature the same size air filter, but this is a fleeced one and this is a gilled one. This one's much higher capacity. These gills can fill up with material while it's still breathing well. This one, when the outside is coated in sawdust, you need to clean it and or replace it, but they are interchangeable. So if you have a 391 and you want to upgrade your air filter, you could purchase this filter and put it on your 391. Now, I didn't go into it in great detail, but this C on this saw indicates that this is an Mtronic saw, and you can purchase a 362 in a C or without a C. In this case, the C means that it features a computer-controlled carburetor that makes changes on the fly to your fuel delivery system. It also makes it easier to start. On the master control lever, there's just this triangle position. You can set it into the triangle hot or cold. It will never flood and it'll crank in less pulls. I want to let you come in and get a close-up of these two motors. It's not that in the case of like a backpack blower like a BR350 and a 430 you have the same motor with a little bit of fan and tuning. These are totally ground up different motors, different machines. Now I want to take off the sprocket covers and show you the upgrades inside of there. So first the 362. Just to further clarify, this saw is available with the Mtronic computer carb feature and without it with a traditional style carburetor. I would say initially when that system came out, there may have been a bug or two that scared people. But now for the last six, seven years, that technology has been selling on a lot of saws without a single hiccup. Very successful. It does make it really peppy. And I would say it's, it's a good feature to have. But if you're a traditionalist and you want just an old school style carburetor with a choke, that's still an option. You see how your nuts, they're trapped. So you're not going to lose your nuts in the field. Whereas on a 391, they do come off a bit quicker, but they can vibrate off. They can get lost down in the underbrush, in the woods. And then if you don't have a backup, you're stuck. You can't use that saw anymore that day. All right, inside of here, on the 391, you have a drum style sprocket. On the 362, you have a rim style sprocket. This is a much easier sprocket system to service. Also to switch between different pitches if you wanted to change barn chains out. It's just simply taking this ring off versus taking this whole drum off. This drum here is also around $28, whereas this rim is around eight to $9. If you're putting a lot of mileage on your saws and you're having to replace sprockets often, this is gonna be a lot less expensive in the long run. But I also wanna take this sprocket totally off of here because I wanna show you one last upgrade that I became aware of the other day. I got to remove this E-clip. So that's how easy it is to change the sprocket. Like this is a 3.8.7 tooth. And say you want it to go to a 3.8.6 tooth or 8 tooth to change your speed of your chain up or down. It'd be as easy as having one of these in your pocket and changing it out there. So that's your rim sprocket drum. And then this is your needle cage bearing. And this is a really heavy needle cage compared to every saw below this saw. This is the first saw that steps you up to this heavy duty needle cage bearing. To compare and contrast, let's pop this one open real quick. All right. So when this sprocket wears through, this whole piece has to be replaced. And this is the rim sprocket out of this. You can see like I can squish it with my fingers. This is the needle cage out of a 391. This is the needle cage out of a 362. Just kind of a um, summation of the two saws constructions. All right, now I'm gonna put these saws back together. We're gonna go actually put gas in them and we're gonna rev them up. We're gonna see what kind of RPM we get out of both saws. All right, this time around, we're not putting bar and chain oil because we're not gonna run them long enough 
to do any damage to the bar and chain. On a previous video where we had some smaller saws out here, we did an RPM test without the bar and chain, and then we did it with the bar and chain, and it didn't affect the RPM very much. So this time around, we're just gonna keep the bar and chain on, and we're gonna run them wide open and see what kind of RPM we get out of each. All right, this is the MS391. I just wanna show you how each of them cranks. It's a little bit different. So with a 391, you have to get this master control lever all the way down into the choke position, and then you're gonna hit your decompression valve, put your brake on. You can crank them standing up like this. All right, now the MS362, this is the C model. So it does have the Mtronic carburetor and it doesn't have a choke and a half throttle position on the control lever, it just has this triangle starting position. You can start it here hot or cold without flooding the engine. So we put it down, we make sure our decompression valve is pressed in, set our brake. All right, now I gotta take the covers off. We are going to attach this tachometer to the spark plug. All right, that was the MS391. Now for the 362. quite a bit more RPM, about 2,000 more RPM. That translates into a lot more chain speed. This is gonna cut a lot faster. Add to that that it's more horsepower. Uh, it's gonna feel like a lot more of a saw for sure. There you have it, the MS391 versus the MS362. In our RPM test, we found an average RPM top speed of around 12,000, which is screaming fast. But on the MS362, we found an average RPM of around 14,000, which is a good bit faster. 2,000 more RPMs. That means quite a bit more chain speed. We've done the math before. It's roughly 60 miles an hour. It's about how fast the chain is spinning. It's enough to do a lot of damage. Now, the price difference, $210, is real money. And, uh, you know, this saw is going to be ideal for some. Whereas this saw is going to be worth the upgrade in price for the upgrades in performance. That is going to be up to you. For me, a lot of people buy a saw to have it a long time. And you know the saying, buy once, cry once. The 362 is the buy once, cry once saw. Yeah, it's going to sting, but it's not going to sting 20 years from now. It's not going to sting every time you're out in the woods. Guys, I hope this video helped you in picking out your new 25 inch chainsaw. We got lots of other videos like this. They should be popping up on your screen now. We have a video that's all about small frame chainsaws. Check that one out. We also have a video that's all about gas versus electric chainsaws. Check that one out too. Thank you so much for watching, making it all the way to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.